सुयोगी युंजीत सततम आत्मानम रहस्य स्थित एकाकी यतचित्तात्मा निराशीर अपरिग्रह सो योगी शुड कॉन्स्टेंटली मेडिटेट रिमेनिंग इन अ सॉलिटरी प्लेस अलोन कॉन्स्टेंटली मेडिटेट ऑन द सेल्फ बिकमिंग फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल सेंस ऑफ पोजेशन focusing attention on the self should meditate so the preparation is very important in order to meditate pay attention to the self we should be able to understand what is the nature of self so the study of the scriptures and contemplation on it helps us to comprehend what is my real nature also bhagwan has explained it in the second chapter so the second chapter reveals the nature of the self which one has to understand very clearly because meditation is paying attention meditation is not thinking meditation is not uh, an action but meditation is like being aware of being attention becoming conscious of the self so how to go about doing it ha huh? this meditation leads to the state of realization wherein one comes to see the same self everywhere samaloshtashma kanchana the yukta the one who has attained sees the same self in all situation in all objects in all beings sama buddhir vishishyate such a person is excels so in order to uh, help us in the process of meditation we can we have to also take care of the environment so if the environment is conducive it helps in meditation but just the process of sitting and the environment itself is not meditation but it helps so what are the various uh, things we should take care of while meditating that bhagwan explains in detail now from verse number 11 shucha deshe pratishthapya स्थिमासनमत्मनमासनमत्मनाश्रित नातिच चैलाजिनकुशोत्तर शुच देशे प्रतिष्ठाप्य स्थिमासनमत्मन नाट्युश्रित नातिच चैलाजिन कुशोत्तर हाँ इन ऑर्डर टू हेल्प अस इन मेडिटेशन वी हैव टू सिलेक्ट अ गुड प्लेस एंड सिट एंड मेडिटेट बिकॉज देर शुड नॉट बी एनी डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम द एनवायरमेंट देर शुड नॉट बी एनी डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम अवर ओन बॉडी देर शुड नॉट बी डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम अवर सेंसेस should not be distraction from our own mind so we have to select a good place where we can sit for a long time and meditate so bhagwan describes it in detail he says shuchau deshe select a pure and clean place because the environment affects our body affects our mind also so as far as possible we have to select a clean and pure place some place can be clean but may not be pure some places may be pure but may not be clean hmm. so we have to select a place which is pure pure means which has got the samskar of divinity that that way divinity is everywhere but there are some places which wherein 
ways invoke the presence of divinity, like in a temple or in a in a in an ashram. Hmm. God is everywhere, but there many people have invoked the presence of divinity, so that place acquires a special vibration. If we go to a place where people only indulge in pleasures, or to a place where people only fight, or if one has experienced a lot of sorrow in that place, so that vibration the mind can feel, and it might be difficult for the mind to acquire that quietude and balance. So in the initial stages, later on then one can meditate anywhere. But in the initial stages, it is uh, very important that we select a place which is free from all negative vibrations. If not anywhere else, we can do it in our own home where we have kept a room separately for this purpose. In that room, we should not uh, indulge in any pleasures, should not indulge in any argument or fight. Hmm. but it is kept only for the purpose of meditation. So when, the, when you enter that room, the mind also knows that now it is time for meditation. So it is more tuned, it gets more tuned and it becomes easier for us to meditate. So Shuchau is a clean and pure environment surrounding. So, Shuchav Deshe Pratishthapya Stiram Asanam Atmanaha. Bhagavan says you place your asan there, the seat on which you have to sit. See, simple little little things also Bhagavan tells us. So, you place your asan. What type of asan? He says, Chailajana Kushottaram. The asan on which we sit should be comfortable and should also be a good. A bad, bad, huh? bad conductor of heat, like like a, like a wood or something, a, a cloth and all, which is which is a bad conductor of heat, because when we if we sit directly on the ground, all the heat from our body will go into the ground, and a person might the body will become numb, it can become cold. Huh? Because a lot of heat also may get generated when one meditates, or the whatever heat is there in the body, there is no much resistance and all. It might just escape into the earth, and one can, uh, the body can become very numb and cold, and this will not help in meditation. So it is very important that uh, we sit on a asan, which is. Uh, here Bhagwan is described in those good old days, one can have uh, grass on the bottom, uh, just above the ground, and over it some sort of skin, ajinaha, and over the skin a cloth. But one need not go in search of skin or some hunting and all, but one can use the, what you call blanket or something like that, and over it nice soft uh, cloth. It should not be too hard, not too soft. That you sit in the asana, you sink inside. That is also not good and not too hard also. So one has to find his or her own comfortable asana on which you can sit for a long time. Also the asana should be kept, your asana should be kept separately for yourself, because even the asan carries its own uh, samskar. So as we, as we pr proceed on this path, so we should try to maintain some, uh, what you call, some restriction in our asan and place and all in the beginning. So place your asan, Bhagavan says, tiram asan, tiram asanam atmanaha. Asan is not only what on which we sit, but the way we sit is also called asan. So first we have to place the asan on which we have to sit. 
and this asan bhagwan said na ati uchritam na ati nicham it should not be very high high means it should not be on a on a uh, on a high place where you have fear of falling down or it should not be up in the himalayas too high that where the pressure and all those uh, oxygen is less that you might not be able to meditate for long nor the asan should be deep inside the cave of the earth somewhere but it should be in a well uh, proper place not very high not very low in a proper place na ati nicham na ati uchritam and on that we have to sit and our the way we sit is also called asan and that asan bhagwan says should be stiram stiram means absolutely steady in yoga sutra also patanjali rishi defines asan as stira sukham asanam asan is that on which you can sit steadily without uh, moving and it should be also sukham comfortably if we cannot uh, put that padmasan and all we need not worry about it because all the attention will go there only and you might require somebody's help to untangle you or remove that padmasan so sukham asana because the whole idea is that you should be able to forget your body and we can forget as i said yesterday also you can forget if it is absolutely healthy and also free from any any pain or any any other uh, uncomfortable uh, posture and all so when we sit in a steady posture and if we learn it for a long time then the body can remain steady like that without demanding attention the main thing is the body should not demand attention because even a little bit of attention if it demands then we will not be able to focus our attention on our own self it will become difficult it will be distraction is like a person who is like a sports person and all who wants to like let us say archer who wants to shoot the target he cannot afford any distraction ne somebody coming and showing him sms aa gaya zara pad lo and he wants to shoot so that will not help even while driving they say that uh, should not be any distraction no phone calls no other distraction because then we will not be able to concentrate on our driving and can meet with an accident so similarly the body if it is kept absolutely still and if we practice it for a long time to master this asan then we are free to meditate then body will not interfere body will remain steady for a long time and meditation is done by sitting posture because uh, standing is is difficult one may fall standing is a rajasic posture and lying down is a tamasic posture so sitting is a satvic posture so one has to uh, sit and meditate so stiram asanam atmanah of your own self you sit there absolutely still and each of this step can be practiced for a long time to gain some mastery over it one need not go through the whole process in the beginning itself but one can just develop a mastery of just sitting still without any movement and it should not be very uh, stiff or rigid but in a comfortable steady posture so shuchav deshe pratisthapya having placed the asan sit there stiram asanam atmanah na ati uchritam na ati nicham chaila jana kushottaram placed uh, uh, the after placing the asan properly you sit there in a very steady posture this is the first step then what further bhagwan says 
तत्रेकाग्रमन यतचिंद्रिय क्रिय उपवेशने योगमात्मशुद्ध तत्रेकाग्रमन यतचिंद्रिय क्रिय हाँ तत्र हैविंग सेट ऑन दैट आसन वेरी स्टेडी भगवान से नाउ यू कम टू योर माइंड नाउ देर इज नो मोर डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड अराउंड यू देर इज नो मोर डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम योर सेंसेस देर इज नो मोर डिस्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम द बॉडी नाउ यू कम टू योर माइंड ऑल योर अटेंशन शुड नाउ कम टू द माइंड and the mind is uh, made up of lot of thoughts and the mind keeps on running from one object to another the first step is to f- develop the concentration of your mind focus of the mind on any point tatra ekagram mana kritva ekagram means single pointedness make the mind single pointed towards our ultimate uh, object of meditation that is our own self but even before we meditate on the self we can make the mind single pointed by focusing its attention on any any uh, what you call any mantra or maybe even on our breathing one of the most interesting way of uh, making your mind totally focused is to just pay attention to your breathing just breathe normally and pay attention to your breathing so in that what happens the mind just is given one job and the mind just remains there only all the thoughts and all the emotions just flow in that one point itself that is called ekagrata concentration concentration itself is not meditation but concentration helps in meditation so we have to develop this concentration it can come through japa also or by just uh, imagining a particular form in the mind and focusing one's attention there or we can uh, what we call focus on any part of a body also so wherever we have to focus and develop that concentration of the mind it helps the idea is to remove all distractions from the mind bhagwan says yata chittendriya kriya control the kriyas the activity of the senses as well as the mind the senses they have their own activity constantly the senses are involved in giving us information about the world constantly the senses give information about sound taste touch hmm, whatever is available the senses keep on providing that information to the mind because when we get that information from the world we can respond to the world but here there is no need to res- interact with the world so we don't want any stimuli or any information from the world the senses should be given uh chutti like casual leave that you don't have to give me any information about sound taste touch huh? you just take a holiday just remain relax so therefore when we sit for meditation we close our eyes because eyes there's no need for any distraction we close our mouth and the body is also kept steady so even the sense of touch remains steady the ears will might be creating disturbance but whatever sound we hear we should not contemplate we should not meditate on those sounds just let them just come and go and whatever smell we get that also we need not contemplate as in the fifth chapter we have seen 
Shabdan Krutva Bahir Bahyan. Bhagavan says the outer stimuli, you keep them outside itself. So restraining the activities of the senses, not only the organs of perception, but also organs of action. The legs are kept tight, means when we sit at one place, the legs, their movement gets restricted. The hands are also tied. You can place them on the knees or tie them together. The mouth is closed. So all the organs of action are also uh, kept under control. Then Bhagavan says, Chittain, Chitta Kriya also, the activity of the Chitta, Chitta means the memory, our mind which goes into the past or sometimes goes into the future, that activity of the mind also should be restrained. So no more going into past or going into future, focusing one's attention at one point the mind develops total concentration and when mind is concentrated at one point then it becomes calm and peaceful. So as I said we can even uh, concentrate on our breathing, breathing naturally and just focus your attention on that breath. Because breath doesn't carry any impressions with it. It is, uh, it is formless, nameless, doesn't carry any impression, so it is a very good point to focus. So Upavishyasane, having sat on the asan, Bhagavan says you concentrate your mind and restrain all the activities, other activities of your mind and the senses, and then with that quiet and concentrated mind, after making the mind quiet and concentrated, now you shift your attention to your own self. Yunjad yogam atma vishuddhaye. Pay attention to yourself to make your mind further pure. Vishuddhaye, atma vishuddhaye. See, our mind becomes pure by karma yoga, then further by upasana, then it becomes pure by knowledge, and further it becomes pure by dhyana. It becomes free of all its impurities. And the final impurity, the ignorance also disappears. And when that happens, we gain abidance in our own self. So here even meditation is a process by which our mind becomes further pure and it gets, it abides in one's own self. So, yunjad yogam atma vishuddhaye. Vishuddhi means absolutely, completely pure. And the attention is to be shifted on the... This happens when we shift our attention to our own self. See, paying attention and thinking about something is two different things. For example, if I tell you to pay attention, let us say, to your own hand. Hmm. Pay attention to your hand. That is one thing. And think about your hand is a different thing altogether. Or let us say, if I tell you, you think about your nose. Huh? You can try. Each one your own nose. Huh? Don't think about your neighbor's nose. So think about your nose is one thing. But when I say pay attention to your nose, become aware of your nose, is a totally different activity or different uh, thing altogether. When you pay attention to your nose, you can become aware. You become aware of the presence, the existence of your nose. You become aware of the existence of your nose. The moment you think about the nose, you go into the past and future, you go into words. You go into memory, you go into imagination. For example, when I tell you, okay, look at the flower. Looking at flower is, or pay attention to flower or become aware of flower is meditation. But when I say think of the flower, you go into an imagination. 
all your memory about flower, all your knowledge about flower will come and it will distract you from paying attention to flower. So attention is a higher uh, level of uh, awareness or higher state than thinking. Thinking is also very important, but we have to, meditation is going even beyond thinking and going at the level of attention, awareness. Hmm. Thinking helps us to focus our uh, uh, direction, it gives direction to our awareness, but then we have to drop that thinking and just remain with the state of awareness. So here, Atma, meditation on self means first we have to think of the self and understand what it means when we say self, Atma. And after that, once our attention gets focused on that self, you just drop all thinking and be remain with full awareness of the self. I am, that pure awareness of your own existence, I am. See, when somebody asks you, who are you? I say, I am so-and-so. That so-and-so is made up of your imagination, your thoughts, your, all your ideas and all. So shift your attention from I am so-and-so just to that uh, uh, experience of I am. Then even drop your attention from I and just become aware of M, your pure existence. Without any name, without any form, without any color, without any shape or size, it's a pure existence. That is called paying attention to your own self. Without the help of any words, without the help of any thoughts, just by using the, uh, ex uh, the ability or the nature of that self, which is of the nature of awareness itself, of consciousness itself. Be conscious of that consciousness itself. So that is called uh, meditation on the self. Yunjad Yogam. Ah. And as we pay more and more attention to the self, the mind starts becoming more and more pure. Because all the activities of the mind gets dropped. All the influence of the past gets burnt. All the distraction of the mind gets, uh, it gets, uh, it gets removed. And the mind becomes free from all distraction. And ultimately the mind dissolves in the self. It's like the clouds we see in the sky. Sometimes we see dark and big cloud, but slowly it gets disintegrated. And uh, as you are looking at it, it just gets dissolved into the space. Only empty space remains. Similarly, the mind with all its bundle of thoughts and impressions, slowly, as you meditate, get dissolved into the self. So yogam, uh, atma vishuddhaye, yunjad yogam atma vishuddhaye. 